So far, when it comes to the Steam Deck, I've talked about modern games and how they perform. I've talked a little bit about slightly older games that don't quite hit retro status, in my opinion, things from like the 2010s and such that tend to run really well and preserve a lot of battery power, which is great. But what I haven't talked about yet is emulation on the Steam Deck. Now, I've hinted at it. I've certainly, you know, seen some like glances to it with B-roll cutaways that showed like Game Boy games running or GameCube games and things like that. But that's what today's video is all about. It's kind of talking about what my emulation experience has been like so far. So really what I want to talk about first is just how I I got set up for emulation on the Steam Deck, which is way easier than I thought it would be. And then two are some of the systems that I'm enjoying emulating the most on, or at least the ones that I found to perform the best. Mind you, this is absent any like hardcore tweaking or configuration changes or anything like that, because I'm a big fan of, you know, having a system and games and experiences that work right out of the box, as it were, without taking just like a ton of tinkering to get working. And thankfully, while there's a little tinkering for that initial setup, I will say that most of the games that I've played after that piece have worked totally fine. So first, let's talk about what I did to get set up for emulation on the Steam Deck. I would say probably about a week or two before my Steam Deck actually showed up, that's when I started doing research to figure out, okay, I know I'm going to be able to play a lot of Steam games pretty easily on this, but what if I want to actually play like PSP games, PS2 games, GameCube, Dreamcast, and all that stuff. So that's really when I started doing research, and one of the first things that I found was a video from ETA Prime that highlighted an application called EmuDeck or emu deck. I always get this pronunciation wrong, I'm sure. But anyways, you can actually go to emudeck.com and what it does is it basically gives you a really simple breakdown of only five steps that you really need to perform to get emulation up and running on the Steam Deck in short order. And even though there are five steps, they really accomplish two high level things, I would say. One is actually just loading the emulators on your system, and the other is actually making sure that not only are they loaded on your system and ready to go wherever you store your ROMs, but also that those ROMs can be presented to you in a very easy to access way directly within the Steam interface. I'll go ahead and link to this below, but essentially what you do is you end up downloading an application that serves as a script, and when you run the script, what it'll do is just go ahead and download and install all of those emulators for you, and then it's gonna prompt you and ask you where you want all of your ROMs to live, whether that's on the internal SSD or on an SD card, which is the route that I chose to go. So that's kind of the first high level step that happens is just getting all of the emulators loaded on the system itself and then letting it know where you want all of your ROMs to reside. And then the second part of this process is making sure that all of your ROMs are actually just natively accessible within the Steam interface whenever you're in game mode so you don't have to you know launch into desktop mode every time you want to fire up an emulator and play an old game. And it does this through another application that gets loaded onto the desktop as you complete this process called Steam ROM Manager. And when you first open Steam ROM Manager, it's a little bit intimidating because there's just a ton of information there on that initial screen. But really the only thing that you have to do is go ahead and preview the grid, which will give you a breakdown of how all of your games are going to appear in the Steam interface from that main selection. And then there's also a separate section where you can go ahead and choose other pieces of artwork, things like the hero, the banner, the poster, and all that stuff. So that way, whenever you browse to other areas within the Steam Deck interface and you're actually looking at your ROMs through like a different context, I guess you would say, that it's still gonna display good looking artwork. And initially what that's gonna do is reach out to some data Based sources online that house a lot of the common artwork that would be associated with the ROMs in your library. But the cool thing is, if it downloads the wrong one, it actually gives you a few selections that you can kind of cycle through. Or if none of the images are what you're looking for, you have the ability to just go ahead and define your own. So if you go out on Google Image Search somewhere and you know find a cover for a game that you think is more appropriate, you can go ahead and manually add that if you'd like. And something else that's really nice about Steam ROM Manager is that every time you have to relaunch the application, if you add or remove ROMs, it does maintain any custom artwork that you've uploaded previously, so you don't have to repeat that process over and over and keep you know, finding uh, you know, the cover art that you want for a particular game that really wasn't accessible through any of their database sources. So it's pretty easy to use. Uh, again, it looks more intimidating than it is, but at that point, you basically got the emulators loaded, you've got them pointing at the correct ROM directory where you're storing everything, thanks to the initial install script, and then you also have Steam ROM Manager so that you make sure that as you add new titles to it, that you can make sure that the artwork remains pretty as you navigate those games, you know, through the game mode interface of the Steam Deck. All in all, I would say the entire process can be done in less than five minutes. However, depending on how anal you want to be about making sure that every image is just, you know, perfectly pristine in the interface, which is something that I'd try my best to do, you could spend hours of time making sure everything is perfectly optimized. And I'm sure, you know, there are even more ways to customize and make it look even prettier than I have so far that, you know, would probably be beyond the scope of this video and certainly beyond the scope of my knowledge because I haven't really done a deep dive research into that yet. So yeah, that's basically the process that I used to get set up for emulation. And once I had everything in place, that's when I started exploring how emulation actually performed on the Steam Deck. 
Now, obviously that's going to depend largely on what application you're using to perform that emulation, you know, how nuanced you want to get with the configuration options, you know, because there's just a ton of things that you can configure on the back end to make sure that, you know, a certain ROM performs uh, better under certain conditions than others. But for me, again, I was just looking for an out of the box experience. Is it going to work most of the time? And I'm happy to report that yes, it absolutely did. But I did not go on a mission to basically have like, you know, a thousand ROMs on the system or have every system under the sun emulated. I really focused on a few key ones that I knew that I had games that I would want to visit regularly, uh, specifically on the Steam Deck in portable mode, because that's just kind of awesome. Now, the ones that I prioritized, obviously, you know, anything like Super Nintendo, Game Boy, you know, NES, Genesis, uh, Game Gear, all that stuff runs great. It's not particularly taxing. But what I was a little bit more concerned about was how well it would do with uh, more modern 3D systems, not like... PS4 and PS5 or something like that, but rather I'm talking about systems in the vein of, you know, GameCube, PS2, PS1, PS3, Xbox, things like that. So for me, I didn't go through every single one of those systems yet, but these are the ones that I've spent the most time with so far. Uh, I did spend a fair amount of time with Game Boy Advance just because, you know, there are a ton of amazing games for that system and I love collecting for it anyways. So it seemed nice to be able to consolidate like my entire collection into games that I could easily access on the go without having to carry around a bunch of my cartridges. And I have to say, initially they looked great. They immediately applied like that Game Boy Advance sort of grid-like uh, filter, which you can disable it if you'd like. I went ahead and left it on just because I like the look of it the same way I like the look of the PSP grid screen. I have to say the performance was rock solid. I played a little bit of Kirby, a little bit of Super Mario Bros. 3, a couple of Castlevanias just to kind of get a feel for how it played on the Steam Deck. And it really does just look incredible. Now, you can have the image stretched if you want, which I know is the ideal way to play, but I personally don't mind it that much. Or you can go ahead and mess with the aspect ratio if you want something that's more pixel perfect. But I have to say, just seeing Game Boy Advance games blown up on a screen that large was really something. Like I kind of got a taste of it before playing things like, you know, Game Boy Advance games on like a PlayStation Portable, for example, or emulating on other portable systems. But the screen is just so comparatively massive on the Steam Deck that it really kind of brings them to life in a whole different way. So that's probably one of my favorite ones. Um, naturally, you know, as somebody who's done a lot of PSP content on this channel, I also tried PSP games and they also played really well, which for me, I was, you know, worried about that because again, when you start getting into 3D systems, I know the emulation performance can start to get pretty dicey, but the only problem that I had was initially when you load the PSP emulator, it doesn't have the fonts natively downloaded for things like the save screen that pops up on a lot of games when you first open them. So I did ha actually have to go into RetroArch and go to the section where you download those supplementary files, which wasn't immediately apparent to me. Like I had to do a little bit of research on Online, which, like I mentioned in the impressions video for the Steam Deck period, is a thing you're probably going to have to do anyways if you start getting into the world of tinkering and trying to push the system beyond what it's you know designed to do. But you know, PSP games also worked really well. I tried to play some uh, Ridge Racer on it. I also played a little bit of uh, Silent Hill Origins, and so far it's worked great. And that was actually really encouraging because I had done a little bit of PSP emulation on my Mac, and there were certain games that just did not run well. One in particular was uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories, where I had a lot of problems with the lighting system that they use in that, but I did not have the same problem whenever I you know, tried it out on the PSP. And speaking of that, the other system that I tried that I was really kind of hoping would work okay, and it seems to run great so far, at least in my initial testing, there are PlayStation 2 games. Granted, so far I've only really messed around with Silent Hill 2 and 3 and Dragon Quest 8, but I was really surprised at how consistently good the frame rate was and really just how amazing the graphics look in a form factor like that on that screen. Uh, now, some purists might scoff at that, wanting to play you know, PS2 era games on a CRT, and I don't blame them at all. I'm just saying, personally, for me, it was not a big deal, and I was just thrilled at the idea of having some massive RPG like Dragon Quest on the go uh, with a display that's just really that gorgeous. And then on top of that, these systems, much like you know some of those slightly older games that I mentioned whenever I did like the, you know, like the older Steam games that you could download and play on the Steam Deck in that other video, uh, also maintains a great frame rate, but then the battery life is insane. You're looking at five to eight hours, depending on what you're playing whenever you're emulating, which is just awesome. So yeah, Game Boy Advance works great, PSP, PS2. Dreamcast mostly works well. Uh, I've noticed that I have encountered some stuttering, uh, especially for like the opening cutscenes or, you know, like the intro videos that you would see in a lot of games. But after you get past that, it seems like most of the games that I tested continue to run well. Now, even though all of these have performed well so far and these systems individually have a lot of my personal favorite games on them, I think my favorite one to emulate so far is GameCube because I was really surprised at how well it runs. I was expecting that we would have some hiccups, but playing things like F-Zero or Metroid Prime or Eternal Darkness or SSX on a system with just a screen that's this large for portable play is really, really great. It can admittedly be a little bit weird remapping the controls 
for the GameCube because sometimes they put like, you know, your action button and your back button in locations that are kind of weird and not always in sync with like, you know, what you would call the standard controller setup of the day with like four face buttons since, you know, it had A, B, X, and Y just kind of in an odd location compared to standard controllers at the time. So I had to mess with that a little bit for certain games just so, you know, I wouldn't have to reach so far. Like I think in F-Zero, uh, I actually had to reach all the way up top to hit the turbo button, which obviously isn't ideal. But that aside, you know, once you get the controls the way you like it for individual games, you can save it on a game by game basis, which is really nice. However, as great as the emulation experience itself has been so far, once you get up and running, there have been a few weird things to contend with as I've continued to try to like flesh out, you know, my emulation library on the Steam Deck. One of those things would be that not every emulator is accessed directly based on that installation script. So some of them you actually have to go into RetroArch to make configuration changes. Others I actually had to back out and go to the desktop menu and actually run like the Dolphin emulator, for example, and make changes directly there to tweak things to my liking. So again, you're not gonna have an experience where it's just a completely flawless, like instant setup, but Emu Deck really takes a lot of the legwork out of it. So if you're thinking about emulating on the Steam Deck and you're like, ooh, is this gonna be a really complicated setup process? It can be a little bit confusing, but ultimately way more streamlined than other things that I've done in the past to try to get games running in an emulated way on a system that they were not designed to run on. So does that make the Steam Deck my absolute favorite emulation machine now? I can't say for sure, but it's up there. It's very close. And the reason I say that is just because the combination of stellar battery life and a larger display to play a lot of those games, and the fact that I can just sort of natively access them within the same interface that I'm using to access modern games, like say Sekiro or Elden Ring or something else that, you know, is like a more AAA title that's been released here in the past couple of years. The fact that I can have all of that flexibility in a single package is, is outrageously appealing. So to kind of wrap this whole thing up, yes, the whole emulation experience for me so far on the Steam Deck has been fantastic. I'm not gonna say it is the absolute, you know, easiest, smoothest thing to set up of all time or anything, but it's pretty streamlined. And if you're not afraid of a little bit of tinkering, I would imagine you will have a great time too if you got a Steam Deck uh, on deck and on its way to you. So anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure I'll be able to answer all of them, but I will certainly do my best. And I'm also gonna have a link below to the Emu Deck website where you can check that out and also the ETA Prime video that I used to initially get set up. So you'll probably find some good information there as well. Uh, as always, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch the channel. It means a lot to me. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Bye.